Hello, welcome to Genealogy Adventures. I'm Brian Sheffy. And I'm Donya Williams. How are you guys today? Hope you guys are having a great Sunday and we have a great show planned for you today. Don, you're gonna to be doing the introductions? Yes, we do. We have an awesome show. Today we're gonna to be talking with genealogy expert Daniel Horowitz. Um, Daniel actually works with my heritage. He is the lead genealogist at my heritage, and he's gonna be able to answer some questions for us about a little of everything with them. Um, so welcome, Daniel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Donya. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to be here and same uh, with you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're just really, really happy and excited to have you on, to have you on the show. Yes, very much so. <laughs> So Daniel is the chief genealogist at, um, at MyHeritage. And I'm just kind of curious um, because we get a lot of questions from the audience members about trying to turn their passion of genealogy into a career um, and things like that. And I was just wondering what, what is actually involved in, in being a chief genealogist for a company like MyHeritage? Yeah. Uh, well, mostly is uh, in my position marketing. Um, I am in charge of being in contact with the genealogy societies, with bloggers and media. Um, and in fact, I will invite uh, you and any others who are listen uh, that will like to be in contact with me, uh, that they can use the uh, page friends.myheritage.com. Uh, that's to register in this mailing list. I normally send a heads up of whatever it's coming to my heritage, whatever press releases uh, we do, but also uh, attending interviews like this, which I enjoy very much and giving lectures, uh, teaching people how to use my heritage, uh, teaching people what's coming uh, in regards to uh, the records or the, regarding the features. And that is a part that I actually really love because uh, I, my whole life almost, I was a teacher and I love to teach and I love to see the faces of people uh, succeeding uh, in their genealogy and in their learning. So this is more or less what I do, but uh, I can really do anything. And uh, because I am uh, kind of an uh, old employee, uh, older employee on my heritage. Uh, I, I did QA. I did a little bit of coding because I'm, my background is a computer engineer. Uh, I did a little bit of a, everything. And, and that is probably the, the wonderful of, of working in a high tech company. Okay. And um, what kind of skills does my heritage look for in people applying for genealogy jobs? Um, well, they are not much. I mean, jobs, <laughs> not <laughs> skills. <laughs> uh, we, do have, we do have a research team. Um, and there, yes, uh, although I help a little bit to that team, uh, they're looking more for yeah, real, um, let's say, researchers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm not going to say I don't like that much to research, but I don't dedicate as much time as I used to do to research. Uh, in the marketing department, uh, we have people that uh, had no clue about genealogy when they started, and, and now they learn a little bit more, and, and they are now kind of experts also in their own languages. We have a few uh, in different languages as well, because my heritage being a worldwide company, uh, supporting 42 languages, of course, that we need to have uh, Daniels, little Daniels in each <laughs> one of the languages. We call them country managers uh, and I love to interact with them and to teach them every time new tricks and new skills and, and they're doing w wonderful in their own uh, markets. But just, you know, being uh, passionate about it, uh, being able to do a little bit of research, understanding genealogy and transmitting what genealogy is about. Cool. Well, I mean, I have to say, I, I have a personal prejudice towards my heritage. Um, as, our, my, as our audience knows, I discovered that I had a Jewish great-grandfather from Belarus um, who lived here in the, in the DC, Baltimore area. And basically, 
what we're trying to figure out, uh, they, his family used the name Kuhn when they arrived here. And we know that that's a much shorter version of a much longer name, but no one in the Jewish side of the family knows what that name was. So what's great about my heritage is that so many Jewish people have tested and we're still getting, you know, we have very good DNA matches in places like Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Lithuania, the old Russian empire, but definitely towards the border with um, Poland, Germany, all up and down there. So for us, it's been really helpful. So, you know, we, we keep chipping away at it and we're getting closer and closer to what that original name was. Um, but it's just amazing to be able to reach out to cousins who are scattered, you know, whether they're still in Eastern Europe, whether they're in Israel, whether they're in South, South Africa, Brazil. I mean, I get kind of the sense that my Jewish family just kind of got on ships and just went everywhere. Um, so for us, it's just been a really great research hub to, to use. And did you want to start with your first question? I, I can't pull my question up, so I'm having an Okay. <laughs> I, I, do, I do have um, a question from uh, Ms. Kowalski. She seems to be experiencing a problem with chromosome 15, and it's okay if this is a really technical question and a genetic genealogist needs to answer it. Um, but she seems to be having an issue with her chromosome 15. Um, Okay, something about she has a big match, but her pa neither of her parents match this person. And she okay. seems to be experiencing this only on chromosome 15. I suppose if you could clarify, is there an issue and is, is that something that's being looked at? Uh, well, I, don't, I haven't heard about a specific issue, not in 15 or in any other. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, I was not an expert. Uh, on DNA and genetic genealogy, but I became, uh, let's say, more knowledgeable about that. And I have uh, uh, great people behind me at the office that normally helps me uh, not only understanding, but being able to teach it. Um, and I'm going to cite a friend here, uh, which is Blaine Bettinger, because I also learned from him a lot. And he actually made a study and proved that very little of the matches that we will have, even when you test your mother and your father, and it will make sense because you have 50% of your mother DNA and 50% of your father DNA, that whoever matches you will also match one of them. And that is how you know if the match is coming from the paternal or the maternal side. But he, has uh, tested plenty of people in his family, both his parents and himself, and he came to a conclusion that uh, although we get our, mat or our DNA from our parents, uh, there is a small amount of matches that will not match our parents, and they will match us. And this is because of the recombination of the DNA and how that works. Um, so. I, I will not know exactly what is the problem. Um, I may pass it on to the team, and uh, they may not know either uh, what's, uh, what's happening over there. Uh, but uh, I will suggest to concentrate in whatever good matches you have and, uh, and, and try to avoid those 1% that may be <laughs> iffy or look uh, suspicious. Okay, and I've got a variation on the following theme. So this is from one of our audience members, Martha Taylor. So she did her original test on Ancestry. She uploaded her DNA results to MyHeritage. She's right. asking the question, is there an advantage to her actually taking a MyHeritage test rather than just uploading the results? Very good question. And although we have a lot of people working on the sales department, I'm not one of them. Okay, I'm a genealogist, and as a genealogist, I have to tell you the truth. No, uploading a DNA from any other company, and you can do that, like from Family Tree, uh, Family Tree DNA, Ancestry, 23andMe, uh, to my heritage, will get you exactly the same same results as if you will be uh, swapping on a my heritage DNA kit. After all, is is the digital information from your DNA and your DNA will not change. What I will suggest you is uh, after or, or besides 
uploading your DNA from another company is to take advantage probably and buy a DNA kit from my heritage for other family members that have not tested yet. That is something that you can do. Um, and you know, uh, just to be true to the title of uh, tonight's uh, interview, uh, be aware that uh, very good prices are coming uh, down the month. <laughs> Uh, and I cannot tell you more than that. <laughs> oh, it sounds like, it sounds sounds like exciting. It sounds like a holiday surprise. Right. Actually. That sounds very exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, you know, there are a lot of holidays uh, from here to the end of the year. And uh, the year has been a little bit bitter, I will say, uh, for all of us uh, in this planet. Uh, so my heritage is uh, want to celebrate and to help everybody celebrate with us. Um, before I get to Charles Holman's kind of double double header question, am I right in think that the impression that I get through my many years of working with um, my results on my heritage, it is true. It, I want to say it's truly international because yes, yesterday I had a third cousin in Sweden, in Norway. He's 100% Norwegian. He has no links, no known links with America whatsoever but he popped up as my third cousin. And I mean, to say that I literally have DNA matches all over the world, Australia, Pakistan, India, China, just everywhere, right. that I don't really see in, in some of your other competitors. So is my impression of that right? I mean, do you really have like a kind of global user base? That is perfectly right, Brian, yes. Um, our database may not be the biggest DNA database in the world, but it's definitely the more international, the most international one. Uh, we have about half percent uh, of a database from the US and the other half coming from all over the world. Again, my heritage supports and it's available in 42 languages. We're selling DNA kits almost in every country of the world. So whenever anybody in any country would like and will uh, search for a DNA test, my heritage will pop up in their own language. And all the results and all the analysis can be done in their own language. That is why people all over the world are preferring my heritage. And for those, again, in the United States or other testers, they can upload to my heritage, which is something that also not everybody allows. And uh, if you ask me, I really think that the MyHeritage database is, is the people really looking for relatives also. You can see that the majority of our testers also have a family tree over there. And in other companies, you may find the people that are doing that for the ethnicities or, or for the novelty of the DNA, and they're not uh, sharing their uh, samples with the other companies. So yeah, you with my heritage, you will have people matching you from all over the world, and that's the beauty of it. So how does that differ from Ancestry? Because um, I mean, Ancestry has their their UK, and then they also have you know what is considered American. What how does that differ yeah. from Ancestry? <clears throat> well, yeah, Ancestry uh, has also Australia, Canada, Germany. Their their base or or their focus on a few countries. Uh, my heritage will sell in any country. If, if you go to Poland, uh, my heritage is, is there. If you have to go to Russia, to Ukraine, uh, to Hungary, uh, whatever, every country you go in Latin America as well, uh, we have a very strong presence over there and we are a very strong selling DNAs also oh. in those countries. Oh, so Ancestry doesn't sell everywhere. I, I didn't know that. Well, you could go probably into their page from everywhere, but people need to find them. And, oh. and when people search in, let's say, Google uh, DNA test, and probably they are not doing it in English, they are doing it in their own languages, my heritage pops up. Wow. So that's what uh, probably makes us uh, more accessible. Good old search engine optimization. How about that? <laughs> well, we also we also invest in in, in some publicities. We have uh, some advertising. 
Uh, we're also present in almost any conference this year or, or from this year on uh, virtually, which actually it's an advantage, but again, all over the world. We have been present in France, for example, in uh, July, in a conference that they, they had over there, and also in Denmark, and we have people giving lectures in those languages, which is also what people are looking. People are looking to educate themselves. Okay, I took a DNA test, so now what do I do with it? And, and we're offering also that part. Okay. So going on to Charles Holman, um, <clears throat> we can forgive if you can't remember the exact dates. Do you know roughly when the, when the last ethnicity estimate was done and when, when it's due to be updated? Well, I think uh, the question doesn't refrain to the ethnicity. It's about the theories of family relativities. The reason I'm saying that is because the ethnicity... Okay, let me, let me answer first that question. Uh, if it's, he's referring to ethnicities, uh, probably a year, a year and a half ago, we had the update of ethnicities. And uh, the good news is, and, and I can disclose this uh, with you with no problem, because it was announced already uh, by our CEO, Gilad Yafer, is that we are about to uh, release a new one uh, on a, it's, it's kind of a different, because it's not only the ethnicities, but it's combined with migration patterns and historical data uh, that will create those groups that you may see in other uh, companies as well. And uh, we are probably a couple of weeks uh, of releasing that new ethnicity, okay? So Excellent. that should answer the question. Yeah. And I definitely want you to talk about the theory of family relativity Most because definitely. that is Awesome. Brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so the second part of Charles's question is, I'm going to summarize this. Is there a way or will there be a way on my heritage that people can see their matches on their mother's side of the family and their father's side of the family? Or to get an indication of where that, how that match relates to them, which, which side of the family tree? Okay, so um, right now there is no way. Uh, but this is something that we are thinking very hard how to reflect this. Uh, right now, the best way will be to go into your uh, common matches uh, of every one of your match. And you will, if you have tested somebody from your mother's side and that match also matches the people from your mother's side, you will know that all the matches in that list are coming from your mother's side. Uh, another way of doing it is to use the um, auto cluster because if you generate the, the report and you see again where the uh, mother or father uh, DNA match is located, you know that all that cluster should belong to your mother or father's side. Uh, unless, of course, you are like me, 86% uh, Ashkenazi Jew, and then the uh, endogamy in the family will just make a whole group with everybody over there, and you will have no clue where uh, the matches are coming. But we are thinking on, on new tools in the DNA to make it easier for people to determine which side of the family and how close it is, and, and if it's really uh, a good match or a bad match, and, and that is a little bit what the theory of family relativity actually wanted to do. Cool. Well, thank you everyone who posted your questions early. Yes. Um, I was gonna say before we get to the next question, cause I'm just kind of conscious of time. Yeah, um, he wanted to show some stuff. For you just to pretty much hand the platform over to you. And if we actually, if I could be really cheeky, uh, cause you can tell we're really excited about it. I don't know if you were planning on leading with the, the theory of family relativity, because I think just everyone needs to see that. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't have uh, a, an image ready for that. That's okay. Um, and the problem 
to showcase uh, things with DNA is, uh, you know what, uh, we are live and we can do something uh, if you allow me privacy. one second here. Will, there, there will be privacy concerns. Yeah, privacy concerns. Uh, exactly, exactly. That's, that's one of the things. And, and at MyHeritage, we are really concerned about the privacy of everybody else. But um, I can actually show you a theory uh, for my mother. Um, I was going to say, you want to use mine? <laughs> <laughs> like, you use me because we can, I'm always open. <laughs> No, 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 no. My my mother allows me to use her uh, as a piggy bank. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and I actually I have a very good one uh, because this is a theory that not only involves uh, DNA and of course dead people. So I will have no problem sharing it with all of you. But it also cross over about languages. Uh, so if you're ready and you want me to show my screen. Yes, mm -hmm. we're ready. And if you can talk um, people through through what it is, because you'll be you'll do a better job summarizing it than me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, it says disable, so you need to do some magic here, probably. Hold on one sec. OK. And in the meantime, let me explain what is the theory. The theory is no other thing that a possible path that you could uh, or my heritage actually thought to connect two DNA matches. Meaning, um, in this case, you are already seeing there my mom, okay, uh, or the theory for my mom. My mom is right here in the lower uh, uh, left side. This is my mom. And you can see her family tree goes up to her great grandparents. Now she has a match, a DNA match with another person, which I not going to uh, show right on the extreme left corner. And really, and I'm the genealogy of the family, I couldn't figure it how they may be related. So my heritage analyzed the family trees and the records that we have and try to find that connection between those two individuals. So in this case, we went through my, uh, great, my mother's great grandfather, okay? And we found them, him in another family tree. Now the beauty of this, and again, talking about the uh, internationality of my heritage, is that this other family tree, and if you cannot read the names there is, well, because you don't read Hebrew. The other family tree was built in Hebrew. And although it was written in Hebrew, and although that the name was not a 100% match, it's actually only a 75% match, we could determine that this is the right person. So we go down this tree and we connect to another tree and we could connect uh, to a birth certificate or to a census record. And we just find the path that goes from one individual to the DNA match of this person. And that is the amazing thing that you have a match that for sure is a match because the DNA don't lie and you should all know that, uh, but you may not be able to trace the match because you're either lacking of, of information in the family tree, the other person doesn't have a family tree, uh, or there are no records to prove uh, things in the middle. So what I normally do and I will recommend everybody to do is not only to communicate with the DNA match and telling, you know, we have a match and my heritage uh, uh, thought that this is the way that we are connected. I also like to contact the people in the middle, okay? The people that actually have those trees and inquire more about that because this is people that actually have my relative on their family tree. So we m must be related. Maybe they have more information about that branch of the family. So it, it is really a very useful tool, but 
And I will go just a little bit down to remind you about the title of this feature, because the title is like that for a reason. This is a theory. And because it's based on other people's family trees, you cannot all be 100% sure that this is how you are related. Again, for sure, you have a DNA relation with the person and you have a match, but you may not be related in this way, you may be related in other ways that we haven't been able to establish. And can I just say that as an end user myself, I am deeply appreciative of the transparency. I, I just, did you hear me? Was I loud? Because I sure said I love the honesty. Yes. I mean, the honesty is just everything. And okay, I'm going to say y'all know how I am. Ancestry is not honest. And I don't care what nobody says, but the through lines does not give you that. The through lines lead you to believe that they're connecting via DNA. Well, I am going to come slightly to Ancestry's defense. It is there, but it's there in very small print. In very small print, but Whereas it this wasn't there at first. First, true. But as so, this, this is uploaded. This is in your face. This is in it's your right, face. It is right there in the title. And Theory I appreciate of. it. I yeah. just appreciate at, the honesty. I'm, at the, DNA, I'm the DNA, it's a match. There is no discussion about it. Right. The, the question mark is if this is the right path or the right way. That's also why my heritage will give you different paths, okay? And uh, here you're seeing uh, another path, okay? And this goes one generation below and it goes through other family trees and it looks pretty much similar, but it's not. Uh, and you can ha have different paths for, for the same match because again, the, the world is connected in many ways. Uh, Brian, I'm pretty sure that if, if you have uh, this Jewish uh, branch in your family, you will notice how cousins intermarried one with the other, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, simply somebody from your mother's side met somebody from your father's side, uh, and they are, had no relationship, no blood relationship at all until they decide to marry each other, uh, and then just made our task as a genealogist more complicated. Well, let okay, me say so, this. I'm going to interrupt real quick. He didn't have to go to his Jewish line to figure that out. <laughs> because our family is like that anyway. We have a a boatload of endogamous. Intermarriage. Endogamous. Yes, we have, we have a boatload of it in our family. So we didn't have to go there. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, I had the pleasure to see, actually, we were talking about the auto clusters, uh, an auto cluster from somebody from Hawaii. Uh, and, you know, I, I laugh every time I say it. And when other people say, yeah, because, you know, only you, the Jewish, has this endogamy. This Hawaiian person has just one cluster. Everybody's related to everybody. And then I go to the East Coast and I, I tell people, yeah, because those uh, this, uh, like Mayflower people, for sure, they just came down the boat and intermarried with the Indians right away, right? Wrong. No, they, they also kept intermarrying among themselves uh, before they mix with the other population. So every group and every population has an economy. The question is how far back and how it's... Um, uh, affecting their current DNA and the analysis. Well, I'm going to say the other thing that I really appreciate is there seems to be much more of a community in terms of my heritage. I don't think I've ever sent a message and it, not, and it hasn't been responded to. Even if people say, you know, lovely to hear from you, yep, can see that we're DNA matches, not really sure how, and they're really honest. They're like, Either they're working on something else and they can't, they can't answer that question or they can't work with me on that immediately. Um, but I have to say I'm really impressed. I, I have not sent a message and it not be replied to. Um, oh, that's, that's why I, I always recommend people not only to communicate with others, like to ask uh, other people, even if they're in the middle of the theory, but also encourage people to answer. And if, 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 it's, if it's one line like, sorry, I have no idea, I cannot do that, uh, that branch really, I, I don't care about that branch, uh, but yeah, to establish that communication. 
Oh, maybe it's also a Jewish thing as well, because you know, after World War II, everyone who survived is leaving and, and going everywhere. Although I'm going to say that my Jewish ancestors left Belarus in about the, in the 1890s, so they were early leavers. But no, kind of like, Af I, like African Americans, just really hungry to restitch those family lines back together. Yes, again. we are. So I have one person who asks, how do you bring up the theory of relativity, the theory of family relativity? Where is it? Like, where do they actually go on my heritage to find it? Because she okay. says she doesn't so see it. So there is, uh, let me see, in the DNA matches, uh, and we used to have uh, a banner uh, right here. Uh, right now, it's not. So you go into the filters, and, and this is probably the, the best way. And in the filters, you can select has a theory of family relativity. And this will give you all the matches that have, or DNA matches that have a theory with you. So you can see that my mom has here a few, uh, and then you can go and uh, see each of those uh, theories uh, for the matches. The other way is when you click to review a DNA match, uh, you will see uh, the first uh, section will be the theory of family relativity in a summary, not as I show you before. And this will give you just one view of how it, uh, how it works. And this is the best, uh, the best path that we found from the multiple ones that you may have. So okay. under DNA matches, uh, you go into the filter, and you can select over there uh, matches that have uh, a theory of family relativity. Now, I'm not sure if rolled out is the right phrase, but is this something that's, that is ongoing? Because I noticed at first my, I only had three theories of relativity, and then mine have actually jumped up to like 12 just, with, just within a week. So, uh, yeah, well, it, it's not in a week, definitely. Um, it takes a little bit of time, and we run this every uh, five to six months, and we are looking to uh, make it more, uh, uh, more often. Uh, but you need to take in account that we need to go over 12.6 billion historical records that we have, uh, and about 55 million family trees with three point something, I think wow. it's five or six billion profiles, plus all the DNA, uh, which is uh, right now, I think 4.2, 4.3 million uh, DNA kits that we have in our database and try to find those paths. Uh, that is why if you would delete now your tree and upload a better tree or you keep uploading DNA test or growing your tree, you will not get a theory immediately. Um, you will need to wait until the next time that we roll again the database and we announce that we have new theories for you. So, okay, that brings in another question because with, and with, with my heritage, you have to have a um a certain what am i thinking? A, you you have to your if your tree isn't if your tree is under 100 and 200 under 250 people then it's a free account but That's any, right. anything over that it's going to be more you're going to have to pay yes. we unfortunately would have to pay the 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 largest amount because Brian has this astronomical tree of over 100,000 folks, probably knocking on 200 if it's not there yet. And then I have my tree, which is about 10,000, a little over, it's knocking on 11,000 people. So I would have to pay. Now, I can't upload my tree to, to do more with this theory of, of relative family relativity. How does that affect us? Like, the, like you're right now, you only have 250 of the people on my tree. So okay. what can we do about that? Uh, well, let me give you a secret, first of all. Uh -oh. uh, right you there. can uh, upload a JETCOM, okay? And that JETCOM will be completely uploaded with as many thousands people you have, 
and it will be there. You, if you don't pay, you will not be able to edit the tree, you will not be able to uh, add more information to the tree, but the tree will be there and will be used for the next time that we do a theory of family relativity. So for that purpose, you can still have a full tree over there and keep it free. Wow. Awesome. But don't tell anybody that I told you that. <laughs> I, we will keep it between us. <laughs> us in our audience. Us in our audience. Don't control. tell nobody, y'all. Keep it yeah. out. <laughs> so the other two tools that um, that really leap out at me with my heritage as well are auto clusters, which again, mm -hmm. my, my, my Jewish cousins are in particular are meticulously working their way through. Um, so it was the clusters and the chromosome browser. And I was just hoping you might be able to kind of educate our audience about e what each one of those things is and then what each one of those things does. Okay, uh, very fast, Brian, because I also would like to uh, talk a couple of minutes about mm -hmm. what's coming and what we have. Yeah. Uh, right now, I just went into the DNA tools and here is where you're going to find this chromosome browser and the auto cluster. The chromosome browser is a graphic representation of which pieces of the DNA you match with somebody. Now, the advantage of using the chromosome browser of MyHeritage is that you can select up to seven individuals mm. and you can see the chromosomes where you match with those seven individuals. For example, and again, for privacy reasons, I'm not going to go there now, but if I will choose everybody from my paternal side, for example, I will be able to determine which pieces of chromosomes in my DNA belongs to my father and probably to my father's father or father's mother, depending on the cousins that I have tested. And you will be able to prove uh, those matches with other people and try to establish where they are coming from. The auto cluster, it's uh, a graphic representation as well, a little bit different. And here I will be able to show you, uh, this is a list of your matches, but not all of your matches. This is only the middle grounds, meaning you will not find here your parents or your grandparents or your brothers and sisters but you will not find either very distant relatives. And what the technology is doing is grouping the matches among the people that are matching themselves. For example, uh, this red area that it's forming in the upper corner, this may be all your cousins from your father's side and other people that are matching your father's side. And this second cluster can be your mother's side. I have actually, again, with one branch with my uh, paternal grandmother's side, I have tested a lot of people. Uh, it, that's my singer uh, last name uh, study, as I, I say. Um, and everybody in, from that branch in the family is in the same cluster. And that gives me other people that may not have the same last name, or I may not be aware of how we are related on the family tree, but the DNA is telling me for sure that they belong to this branch of the family. And this is where I said that uh, people from Hawaii uh, or other very endogamous population will just have one big red square because everybody is actually related to everybody. We cannot, yeah. we cannot do that. So thank you very much for that. Um, as the saying goes, the, the floor is all yours to the tell floor, us what, what's yeah. new at um, my heritage. Well, I, I would love to show you uh, an example of one second. Okay, first, uh, let's talk about records because uh, my heritage has a, a collection, a catalog collection right here under the research part. And here you will be able to sort it by the last update. And MyHeritage has released just a couple of days ago, a very good collection, very interesting collection from Wales and also from Norway. 
uh, church records from Norway. Now, I don't want to scare people with the word church because I have actually found a lot of Jewish last name in this collection because the church in Norway in those years, 1800s and early 1900s, they had to record everybody, including Jewish population. But not only that, we talked already and we mentioned the internationality of my heritage. We also have records from Portugal, for example, from Madeira, from Germany, uh, Japanese American, Armenia, voters list 1919. So if you have relatives over there, uh, you may find it. Uh, Germany again, and, and France, and Canada, Australia. All this is just the records that we have released in the last couple of months. Now, lately, my heritage has invested a lot on photos, on images. We released the enhancer to be able to make blurry photos to appear right on focus. Uh, we also have the in-color technology that will bring uh, a photo from a black and white into colors. And I actually had here, uh, I had an example someplace here, but you know what, let's do one live uh, right here. <clears throat> this is, for example, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother here. And uh, it's, it's as easy as I'm going to do it now. I have a black and white photo right here. I just click the colorized photo, wait for a couple of seconds, and you will get up to 10 colorizations for free. And uh, if you want more, you will need to pay. Look so in this that. case, I'm sorry? No, I just said, look at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I am actually very disappointed Why? because the color, yeah, the colors are not great, but you know what? No problem because my heritage has a tool that will allow you to play with the different uh, variations that you have. And it sometimes it will improve the colors right there. And as easy as it is, you see, now it's a little bit better. This is the before, a lot of reds, and now I have a more uh, nice picture that I can say. Okay. Now the last thing that my heritage did with this technology and the pictures is to give you the opportunity to order a printout of your pictures, and it could be the black and white original or the enhanced and colorized one, whatever you want. And this is a wonderful present for these holidays. You can see here uh, how it looks and you can choose uh, the, um, the frame for the pictures and they are delivered also across the world at any place that you want. So it is really a beautiful thing. And um, there's, there's more coming into the uh, photo world uh, I cannot say more than that, uh, but yes, my heritage has not stopped even for a minute uh, to improve the experience and the tools that you will have in the photo world. What about um, DNA? What's going on as far as DNA? I know you sent a photo with that and you just talked about the records. What's that? Uh, well, the DNA is uh, what it's coming. What I said is the uh, the part of the, the ethnicities or or the ethnic groups. Okay. And and that should be released even before Christmas. Wow. Um, yeah, I I also send you about collections uh, that we talked. Mm -hmm. um, oh, very important. If we are going to talk about free stuff, who doesn't like? free stuff. So, uh, happy holidays. Uh, Halloween is coming uh, very soon, and my heritage is making all the death records available for free during the Halloween weekend. Wow. So, all you need to do is go to myheritage.com slash Halloween, and you will see death records from all over the world for free. And not only U.S., because 
again, in every country in Mexico, they're celebrating Dia de los Muertos. Uh, so why not? And if they're not celebrating anything, they're still going to enjoy the uh, free records. Um, I also wanted to invite everybody uh, to the weekly sessions that we are doing as the experts uh, or as the expert, uh, which is normally me, but I bring also other people. And during the next session, this, uh, this coming session uh, in October, we're gonna talk about success uh, cases with DNA. It, one in particular, uh, the Claire Ray case, which is actually a mother, a Jewish mother that lost her kid in Auschwitz in the uh, extermination camp. They both survived, but they were separate and only thanks to DNA, they managed to reunite each other. Uh, well, actually they were both deceased, but their descendants found each other and they extended the family. Wow, so, that's beautiful. Yeah, that, that is one of the advantages of, uh, of, of the DNA. Mm, that's <laughs> awesome, you got <laughs> That's so awesome. So, I, okay, so I had one person who was, while you were talking about the auto clusters, they didn't know where to find it. Where do you find the auto cluster? Very easy. It's on, under the DNA menu. You will have an option that says DNA tools. Right there, you have the three tools that I, the two tools that I show you, and also the ethnicity map, if you would like to go on that. Okay. And again, to summarize another question. So if you've tested somewhere else and you want to upload your DNA results to MyHeritage, is there a charge or a fee for that? Uh, very good question. So there is no charge to upload. The upload is free. You will get most of the features for the DNA free. Uh, others will be obfuscated, you will need to pay, and then you have two options. And again, I'm not a salesperson, so don't ask me prices, but I <laughs> do know that there is one-time payment, and I know this by heart, it's $29 that I learned, uh, and that will give you all the features for that specific uh, kit. Or you can get a complete account and you will get all the kids that you want to upload and you will see all the features over there uh, in like for the same price. Okay. Um, I had another person who asked about email and contacts. It, it does, do you have to be a member of MyHeritage to email the contacts? Yes. Uh, you need to be a member of MyHeritage to upload DNA, to build a tree, uh, and to send emails. The reason for that, and, and you can be a free uh, subscriber, okay. uh, but the reason for that is because the communication happens inside the MyHeritage system. We will not reveal your DNA to anybody else. Only when you write to somebody and you wanna say, okay, so write me to my personal email, then the other person will know. If you don't do that, all the communication stays on MyHeritage. MyHeritage will send you an email to your personal email, alerting you that you receive an email on MyHeritage and you will be able to go in and see it in the system. Well, mm -hmm. thank you. This has been an awesome conversation. You have just definitely just kind of opened us up to everything on my heritage and me being salty with ancestry. I so appreciate it. <laughs> no, seriously, I do though. I'm, I'm just. I, I said that on the beginning. I am a genealogist, and you know, a lot of people when I lecture, they approach me and, and they try to tell me, you know, all in secrecy, but. But you know, you have things that they don't have, but they have things that you don't have. Right. And as a genealogist, I, I have to be, again, honest with everybody. Uh, you cannot stick with one company. The bad news for us genealogists is that we need to go 
everywhere. You need to go to every archive. You need to go to every library. You need to go to every database because you never know where you're going to find the records. And, and yes, everybody has the 1940 census, okay? Uh, but each company will have some exclusive records that they're not available any place else. So yeah, you will need to stick and search and look into other companies as well. And, it, and it's fine. After all, we all want to better record and better uh, remember our ancestors. So in other words, I need building... to stop being mad at them. Yeah. That's what you're Why? telling me. Huh? <laughs> you're telling me to stop being mad at ancestry. <laughs> Um, I'm telling you to stop being mad at anybody, first of all, okay? And concentrate on growing your family tree. Yeah. Okay? Sir. That's what we all need to do. I feel like I'm talking to my dad and be like, okay, daddy. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose it is true. There, there is no one size fit all. When, you know, my Jewish cousins and I have agreed that my heritage is the place for us to really kind of break through the, that brick wall. My African-American family, it's ancestry to break through those brick walls. And uh, 23andMe, for some bizarre reason, is perfect for my Quaker ancestry. I don't know why that is, but... Well, I, 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 mean, I have to agree, my ancestry DNA. is really great for me for my, um, uh, as my mom would say, across the big pond. Yes. She, you know, that's, she would always say that, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you on that one. I do. It, but it's not only on DNA. L listen, also with the records, okay? Um, if I remember correct, uh, Ancestry did uh, a partnership with FGS for the Freeman collection, okay? If I'm not mistaken, don't caught me on that one. Yeah. Uh, and my heritage doesn't have those records. My heritage will have other records from other places. For example, Greece. Uh, so if you have family or ancestors from Greece, probably you will find them in my heritage and not in other place. Also because, again, the languages. Uh, but yeah, you need, you need to look everywhere. Yeah, that is true. That kind of caught me a little bit by surprise when I first started using my heritage is people will put their information in their native language. So thank the cosmos I know French because I can read people's French trees and a little bit of Spanish. Don't know any Hebrew, I'm afraid, so I've got to rely on my, my cousins for, uh, for, for those. Yeah. What, what about Marcus Russian? For French and Alexis or... for Italian. And I'm glad I, <laughs> glad I those, made that thing. <laughs> those are still Latin characters, but what about Russian and what about Ukrainian and what about yes. Greek? Yeah. Yeah, those are the tough ones. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for um, sharing part of your Sunday with us and for dropping knowledge. Thank you, everyone at home who is tuned in. Yes, thank you very much. Next week, next week's That's show. You. You're so excited about it. Let me life. tell y'all how <laughs> excited I am about next week's show. So next week's show, we are actually going to be speaking with the Honorable James L. Felder. Now, who is James L. Felder? James L. Felder is one of the first, one of three African-American men who became legislators in South Carolina right after, well not right after, over a hundred years after the reconstruction period. He is also the lead, what, what would that be called? Lead military person mm -hmm. who buried John F. Kennedy. Guarded his body. Guarded his wow. body, that yes. So that's who's gonna be on the show. We wanted to go to him because of the politics that's going on today. He's able to speak on that and we were trying to cover some political issues that are going on and we're going into, you know, but also to get his in, but also to get his input, you know, considering he was such a huge civil, well, not, he was part of the civil rights movement. Exactly. Then, we want to see the differences. We want to learn what now. the differences are between the two. So next week's show is just going to be awesome. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I saw what you said, Tanisha. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I get excited. I love it. But thank you so much thank once you. again, Daniel, because this show was great. And you are welcome 
to come My back anytime. anytime because you've given <laughs> so much information and have been able to just share with us. So anytime My Heritage wants to say, hey, we, uh, hey, uh, Genealogy Adventures, we have some new stuff we want to share. Let us know because we're ready. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zonia. Thank you very much, Brian. And just give me a couple of months uh, and I will prepare a nice package for you with a lot of uh, new things that are coming down the line on my heritage. Well, then I'll hold you to that. We will be having Daniel back in a couple of months. <laughs> all right. All right. So everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, I'm Donya again. I'm Brian. And, and we you guys see. have a great, great weekend. See you next week. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.